Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel. Now what I'd like to do in this video is share with you some of the tools that I have at my disposal when it comes to teaching mathematics, right? And this is sort of a routine that I use to talk about coordinate geometry, to teach my students coordinate geometry. And um, it's, it's a routine that I use no matter how old my students are. I've used this little routine with students that I have worked with in elementary school. I've used it with students that I've had in the beginning stages of high school. I've used it in the later stages in high school, grade 11 and 12, right? And I've also used this in uh, with students that I've had in college or university, right? And I, and I use this basically to give people a, a really good appreciation of how mathematics uh, can be used in the real world to give them better appreciation of spatial coordinates, right? To get a, to give them better appreciation of where they are in the world and how the position of other things in the world surrounding them can be looked at from the lens of mathematics, right? Which is basically coordinate geometry. And what I do, I sort of slip in the concept of time in there as well. And the question that I ask my students when I'm when I'm trying to teach them this, right? And it could be it could be just a very simple concept of just putting a point on a Cartesian coordinate system or taking a look at a function, taking a look at a graph and taking a look at how that function varies with time, right? And the question that I pose my students is basically this. I ask them, how many dimensions do we live in, right? And you know, usually it catches my students by a little bit of surprise, right? Because we're, you know, if we're trying to put a point on a graph on an X, Y coordinate system, and if they're having a little bit of a hard time visualizing this, or if we're talking about three dimensions or two dimensions even, we're, we're trying to put, you know, even a polynomial function on a graph, right, an X, Y coordinate system, all of a sudden I sort of pause everything if they're having a little bit of a hard time appreciating what's going on and I say listen let me ask you this how many dimensions do we live in and I pause right and I let them think about it and some students look at me like weird why am I asking this asking this some of them go oh we live in a three-dimensional world some people turn to me and say four dimensions which Basically, depending on the answer they give me, I start this discussion, this little routine in different locations, right? But what I want to do with you right now is go through the whole routine, right? And this, uh, as you can guess, sort of relates to some of the other videos we've put out regarding time, right? We put out a little video or a long video where we took a look at how the perception of time can vary with age and how mathematics can help uh, help us to have a, an appreciation of why as you get older the concept the perception of time may vary depending on your experiences right and in that video we sort of related it to ratios and how long you've lived and how long how old you are and how long you've lived and how many experiences you've had and stuff like this and it was a nice little introductory concept to how mathematics can be used to appreciate the concept of time, right? Their perception of time. And this definitely relates in a big way to what we talked about with um, when we had a little discussion regarding Einstein's theory of relativity, relativity on the paper that he put out on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, where he, he basically introduced the concept of space-time, that we don't live, you know, in just a spatial world. We live in a space-time world because time is the fourth dimension when it comes to us appreciating the universe where we are right and that's sort of a huge inter introduction to this video right which is definitely related to some of the things we've, we're talking about and we will continue to talk about when it comes to zero and infinity because zero and infinity in a big way connect up to space-time coordinate geometry and understanding of time itself and definitely connect up to what we talked about regarding the perception of time how the perception of time can vary with age right so that's a sort of a pretty long and little introduction to this little routine that i have that i work with kids in elementary school even right and basically the concept is this when 
my students have a hard time or not necessarily a hard time when I when I feel that my students don't really have a good appreciation of what coordinate geometry is and what the power of mathematics is when it comes to explaining to us where we are in the world in the universe how that can play out in our everyday lives right and the routine i have is this okay the first question i ask and the, to a certain degree i don't bring this up out of the blue we need to be talking about graphs coordinate geometry points x y axis something like this it has to be something related to something that's going to be put on a graph right so when i'm working with a student that needs to understand this concept right or have a better appreciation for it i sort of pause everything and i turn to them and i say how many dimensions do we live in right and depending on the answer i sort of and how long i've worked with the students i sort of start this discussion in different locations but what we're going to do we're going to start off at the base of it right to a certain degree right you could go a little bit earlier on but i'm going to start it off assuming that we're talking about high school students to, in in large part okay so my question to you is how many dimensions do we live in right and we've already talked a little bit about that in the intro of this right and you know my students sometimes say oh we live in a three-dimensional world and they go you know they try to be funny they go 25 dimensions or something like this and then when they do that i sort of relate it back to string theory and i go well actually it could be 10 or 11 dimensions or something like this some people have discussed using string theory and it could be i think i've even heard 26 at some point papers that i read a long time ago right so my question to you is how many dimensions do we live in right and if there's little pause if there's a little discussion right we talk about it a little bit and then i ask him this if you're going to be meeting a friend somewhere right what are you going to tell them where are you going to tell them to meet right so just imagine if you're meeting a friend downtown somewhere let's say you're going to meet your friend right let's do a little break here let's put a couple of roads here right and let's put a building here and that's a rectangular building let's put a square building here right let's make it bigger so let's put a So let's assume we have a building up here. Okay, <laughs> trippy building, hard to draw in this in this uh, in this angle, right? So let's say we have a building here, and we're gonna meet up, uh, meet with someone, right? And let's say this is the corner of First Street, or let's call this X Street, and let's call this Y Street, right? So if we're gonna meet someone, let's say here, on the seventh floor, okay? So we're gonna meet someone here. Let's put a little floor here, right? And we're gonna meet someone here, right? Let's say we're gonna meet them, and usually I say, you're gonna go watch a movie on the seventh floor of this building, right? What are you gonna to have to tell your friend? How are you gonna meet there? What's the information that you have to convey to them, right? And usually, you know, my students say, oh, I just tell them to meet me at the building at the corner of XY Street on the south side or north side or northeast side, I guess this one, right? If we're north is straight up. Okay. And then I usually turn to them and say, okay, so you're going to sit there and everybody's texting. So I say, you're going to text 
your friend and you're going to say, meet me on the corner of X and Y Street on the seventh floor. Okay. So I usually confirm that that is what they're going to tell them. And then I ask them, is that all you're going to tell them? Okay. And usually most people, 95% of the people have asked this question to, they go, yep. I go, so you're going to text your friend and right now, if you're going to do it, you're going to grab your phone and you're going to text your friend and you're going to go meet me at the corner of X and Y Street on the seventh floor. We're going to go check out the movie or a movie or a show or go to a bookstore or go to a comic store, right? And they go, yeah, really. 95%, if not more, of the students I work with, they say yes. And then I turn to them and I say, when are you going to meet them? And they go, they do a little pause. Right? And while they're having that little pause, I don't let that pause last too long, right? Very quick. I go, when are you going to meet them? And they go, boop. And within a second, I go, we live in a four-dimensional world. There's an x-axis, there's a y-axis, right? There's a z-axis, right? And there's time. There's depth. There's length. There's width, right? And there's time. There's height, if you want to think about it. That's height, the seventh floor. There's length. There's depth, width, whichever way you want to think about it, and time. It is a four-dimensional world, right? So when you're trying to meet someone, you don't just say on the corner of X, Y, and this height. You don't just have an X, a Y, a Z, if we're going to call Z height, right? You also have time. Those are the four, right? four variables we have when it comes to appreciating where we are in the universe okay x y z and time length width height and time one of these could be depth if you want to call them depth, right and then i ask him what is the difference between x y z and time is there a difference between Length, width, height, and time. And I let that pause last longer. Okay. And I let them think about that for a while. And they, they go, I don't know. I go, think about it. Think about it. Right? We have X. Right? We can go this way, that way. We got Y. We can go this way, that way. We got height, Z. We can go up and down. And we have time. What's the difference between X, Y, Z, and time? And I let them think about more. And I let them give me answers. And depending on how frustrated they're getting, right, I continue asking them questions, trying to lead them towards the answer. Because I think that's one of the, uh, one thing that's really important when it comes to teaching mathematics is not giving answers all the time. Sometimes you have to give answers, right, as the punchline, right? But it's really important to lead students on, to get them to get to the answer themselves, right? And make mistakes along the way so they can eliminate some of the answers for themselves, right? So I continue this back and forward with them, okay? And then I turn to them and say, well, X, you can go this way or this way. And then I start introducing numbers on there, right? And I say, if this is a Cartesian coordinate system and this is zero, right? Then we can go negative, right? And we've talked about this Cartesian coordinate system a lot, right? Or somewhat. Actually, no, we've talked about it a lot, right? <laughs> when it comes to talking about XY plane and talking about series 
3a and 3b right with graph polynomials and functions and we've done a lot of it in asmr math right but for the x you can go negative and positive for the y you can go positive and negative right this way and that way for height you can go up and down positive negative you can go in the basement negative right time it's something that as of right now 2000 and end of 2017 we don't know how to go backwards in time we can only go forward in time right so time is one directional as far as we know right so the difference between x y and z is that for x y and z length width height we can go both directions positive and negative right or increase it and decrease it right because you can't really have negative height unless you have you know set your zero point on street level and this thing has parking in the basement so you're in negative height right but when it comes to time there's only one direction we cannot go back in time right right now that you're watching this video 30 seconds from now the only way to go back to where we are right now is to pause the video and take it back you can't travel physically back in time right we have a recording of things but we can't go back in time right when we're experiencing life right so that's the big difference between x y and z x y and z are both directional you can go forward backwards when it comes to time you can't go backwards it's one directional okay as far as we know right now okay. and that is the big difference between what the space aspect of space time is and the time aspect of what space time is right so we live in a four-dimensional world and that's the way we have to interact with the world in four dimensions it is not just an xyz plane that we live in existence that we live in there's the concept of time as well which is obviously links back to what we talked about when it comes to how the perception of time varies with age right when it links up to what we talked about regarding theory einstein's theory of relativity right on the electrodynamics of moving bodies when it comes to relating to the concept of zero and infinity right they all overlap they all overlap okay so i thought i'd share this with you it's uh, it's just a routine that i have um, I'm sorry if the delivery is uh, um, is a little scattered, right? Because this is, uh, when it comes to teaching this, uh, it's very individual um, specific, my students. It really depends on where they are, their mood, their, their understanding of mathematics, how inquisitive they are, how interested they are in this, right? And I play around with that and lead them in certain directions depending on their mindset just to make them have an appreciation for this. And I, and I beat this thing to a pulp. I bring this up. I bring this up. I bring this up to a level where their, their mindset, their, their understanding changes, right? Because I think this is one of the most important things that we really have to understand when it comes to understanding the language of mathematics which is where we are in the world physically right how we perceive time how we experience reality is really dependent on four dimensions x y z and time okay i uh, just thought i'd share that with you uh, it's an important concept i'm going to do a lot more of this stuff uh, I'm going to share with you some of the tools at my disposal, some of the things I do, some of the things I've used uh, to get a point across when it comes to uh, talking about mathematics. Okay, uh, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.